All right, welcome back. And now it's time for the next session. Cash flow. And so I hope you guys are really enjoying this and taking a lot away from what we're talking about. And so this next step is it's about cash flow. And cash flow is just so very important to have. Uh, when you have an emergency, you can't do anything without the cash. It's just so many things that are happening that requires that you have cash flow for it. So uh, cash flow it, uh, really can change your life. Um, it can have a powerful, you can have a powerful transformation and it really helps you. And this is, we're gonna talk about how that works, knowing how much cash you have on hand um, after you've met your monthly financial obligations is a good indicator of financial strength. Now, negative cash flow uh, may indicate that you're spending more than your earnings. You're like, wow, Marilyn, I knew that. Common sense, right? So, but sometimes uh, we can't see these things. And so positive cash flow uh, means that you're spending less than you earn and you have cash left over that can be used to pay down debt faster or put towards your goals and your dreams. And so just this week, for example, uh, in one place, uh, my client was spending $2,500 for where they were living and just suggesting some things that may make a little more sense. And in their case, they were renting. And I said, you know, if you buy a house, even though they like living in upscale areas like myself, but uh, being in a home, sometimes way out and in an area that is not, uh, especially if you can work from home, may be the best option. Or, you know, your situation may change, you may find something different. So $2,500 compared to $800 plus other living expenses, you're talking about maybe $1,200 versus $2,500. So this would give my client and a uh, $1,300 that they can put away and save. Yes, it's just that easy. Finding money like that is just that easy. And uh, for many of us, we don't look at that, we don't look at the equation to see, you know, how might we may help ourselves by holding on to more cash and using it for other things, especially when we want to pay down our debt and go another way. We want to live a lifestyle a lot of times that is just great, glamorous, at each step or that you know it's easy get to it do the things we want to do when we want to do them and sometimes that's not the best thing sometimes we need to balance and control around our lives and so having that pos positive cash flow can mean that you can do many things that you want to do that you may not even be able to do now because you're trying to do everything before that consisted of that so you're doing repeated repetitive things um, like balancing food and budget and diet, dietary needs and all of that, staying within those budget uh, dollar value can be a huge savings for you. So positive classroom means that you're spending less than you earn and you're, you have cash left over that you can use to pay down debt faster or put towards your goals and dreams. It's key to remember though, guys, that when cash flow is strong and positive, you can use your money to your advantage. And here's some tips to make that happen. And so number one, rock your finances with a budget. Now, you better believe it, heroes have budgets. Many people have gone from zero to hero with their finances. I know, I know, I know. Simply by creating a budget and sticking to it. If you're having money challenges, it's time to take note, guys, of the power of a budget. Putting things down on paper, balancing everything, and when you spend your cash is important. I have nothing on paper here, but believe you me, budgets are just uh, so very important. So. Marilyn, what kind of budget help me with? Well, a budget can help you understand your financial situation. That's first of all. Where am I? What am I doing? How do I look? What are my goals? What's gonna happen? And it can help you cut back on expenses 
and kick unhealthy habits, financial habits in the butt. Control your spending and build financial fitness. So by making a budget a part of your financial strategy, I am going to supply you with a worksheet. I'm gonna pull up that worksheet on the monitor and I am going to show that worksheet. So hopefully you have a chance to see the worksheet that I have up front. Let me see, can I, can I do this for you so that you are able to, to see the worksheet that I have out there for you. Uh, I'm gonna close that out and come back. Oh my gosh, did I lose my Zoom meeting? All right, you're still there, yay, yay, yay. I thought I'd launched you. I was, I was getting scared there, but let me see, can I share my screen with you of this budget, all right? So there's the budget. Oh no, that's not the budget I wanted to show you. Uh, let's see, can I pull it up here? Now, hopefully you're able to see the budget that I have on the screen. So make a budget. You have a month, you have the my income amount, the total paychecks, your salary, uh, your expenses each month. Uh, now this uh, budget worksheet will be attached in my digital uh, monitor and you can pull this up and see the worksheet there um, and use it. Uh, this is from the Federal Trade Commission Consumer. And so it's a legal document. I mean, it's a good document. It was made by somebody else other than me. And so um, you can use that um, to your benefit and uh, have it um, for a resource uh, for yourself. I really think that uh, if you sit down with somebody and do this, it's going to help you out tremendously to kind of understand where you're spending your money and what you can do uh, with your funds uh, from there. And you really do want to try to do that with your budget, okay? Now, let's move on. Um, I'll stop sharing my monitor now again, and we'll go back to where we were. So now, joining a gig economy. Now, I talked about this in our uh, introduction session, uh, joining the gig economy and the gig, um, what, so what's the gig economy? It's the growing online, on-demand economy where organizations and independent workers engage in short-term work arrangements for services such as ride sharing, accommodation sharing, dog walking, babysitting, and more. The word gig refers to the transient nature of the job itself, meaning I can go from one thing to the next. I have a lot of gigs. People can say that, or I have a lot of companies. But for me, I believe in multiple streams of income. And so if one is not working, then another is working. So for me, I don't have to go through living through, oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? What's going to happen? I always have something lined up that I can do that can earn me an uh, income or it's earning the income while I'm sleeping at night. And so it is estimated that 36% of US workers take part in the gig economy. And now that we had COVID-19, I do probably have about 50% of workers out there taking part in this. Otherwise, we'd have a lot of people screaming, no, I need money, I need more, I need more, I need more. And so I think we'd probably have a, a lot more than what we um, have that was based on the survey a couple of years ago. And so um, here are a few gig examples to consider. Now you can start with a part-time business and financial service industry teaching people about how money works. You can join a, a person like me and um, once you get your license, you can, I can train you, help you get your license and things of that nature and then you can take that and you can go and try to help other people along with my team that uh, the individuals that are on my team that I'm helping you to grow and teaching you how to run a business 
But at the same time, I'm teaching you how to help other people. And being helping those other people, you're becoming a blessing to them, hopefully, as well. So you can turn your passion into profit by selling the things you really like to make as a hobby. Like I have a, a one a friend of mine, she likes making these bougie t-shirts, she called them. And uh, she makes money, she has fun doing that. It helps to pay for her other hobbies of, of attending concerts with what a COVID-19, of course. But still, she uses that to supplement her income and to help do the things for fun that she's interested in doing. And then also, you can leverage your professional expertise by taking freelance consultant or uh, projects for or tutoring. And so if you're a math whiz or an English person who you can write well, you, you, you have a, your major was English or literature or, or journalism, you can use that to help other people. But say your major was, um, uh, let's say, uh, accounting. You could use your accounting if you're not working as a CPA uh, at a firm, if you're working for a firm other than an accounting firm, you can use your skill sets to help other people with taxes and things of that nature, or you could volunteer to help as well. But you can use these skill sets that you have to, you, to do some other things. We'll say that um, you're a nutritionist. Um, you can use your skill sets to help a, a um, trainer in putting together a diet plan that is useful for a particular client and so that the, the, the trainer doesn't have to use the same diet plan with every client. You could use it in, in that way as well. Uh, say you love music and you worked in the entertainment industry, you can use your skill set for that as well. So leverage your professional expertise by taking freelance consulting projects or tutoring and get uh, to tutor math, to tutor English, help college students out. It's a lot of people working from home now. Parents are going to be needing, since students are going to school online, they need uh, way more tutors than they had out there before. They probably need them anyway. So engage in the gig economy by walking dogs, you can babysit, you can uh, do driving for ride sharing company, you know, if you have a neighborhood and they have dogs and a lot of professionals are working from home, you can, you know, kind of put out a flyer or something like that. Maybe not a flyer, but if you have the, through the neighborhood association, I think, you know, through my neighborhood association, um, back in Atlanta in our home house uh, that we had, we belong to a neighborhood association and we were able to send out various things to that association. So if you're a teenager or you're a parent or someone working from home or you live in apartments, you may check with the apartment people, post something somewhere where the apartment people have that. And you may want to walk dogs uh, in your community, as long as you know you have a background check and things of that nature for some of these jobs, uh, these gig jobs, and um, put yourself out there and help people out. <clears throat> And then uh, rent a spare room. So um, here in Dallas, um, in some places, I had four or five bedrooms. Could you imagine if I rented those bedrooms to professional people that don't want to be in an apartment now, but prefer being in a home house somewhere out in the burbs, uh, where they have a nice backyard and some other things? Those people would probably like that over being in an apartment, and they could reduce their expenses while doing that but also have a ready-made community right there in a home house for them and with ready-made meals or things of that nature where they have a community. And uh, some of my girlfriends and I even talked about, after we finish with this, we're gonna do a Golden Girls type opportunity where we go out and uh, live in a, you know, pool our resources together, live somewhere close to the beach and just have at it where we have our own place like the Golden Girls. That was a great model. And so um, those are some of the reasons that if you want to, the gig economy, again, is really good for having additional income as well as to be your own boss. Uh, if that's something you're interested in, uh, you might want to do possible search terms um, under gigging platforms or ride sharing, accommodation sharing or freelancing and do that. And if you're high level expertise, uh, you can freelance yourself on Fiverr or some of the other sites and really uh, bring in some revenue that way. So the financial services industry needs you, as I stated before, 
if you have people skills, uh, the desire to learn, you're coachable, your willingness to uh, follow proven strategies, and you have an entrepreneurial mindset, I would love to have you as a member of my team if you're interested in that. And I am a, a coach, and, and I'm not trying to be funny, but working with somebody like me is hard to come by. I've worked in financial services from investment companies, law companies, uh, banks, institutions, and now insurance and investment agencies. Um, I have uh, education, I have the background, I'm the package, but I can't do anything by myself. So being a package is one thing, but a package that can bring other in, others in and build a package, that's what I'm about. So I'd love to have you if you're interested. And also veterans. Now veterans are the bomb. You know, I love them. They are great, not that they're bombing people, but uh, military experience has given them the key skills as an entrepreneur. And uh, as an entrepreneur, they have leadership skills, they have great problem solving skills, most of them, their teamwork, great team members, their discipline. And so industries like mine and financial services or others would love uh, veterans to join us. Uh, veterans are good at security business. I have a security business and uh, we only serve in the movie industry. So having that has been, I see the ones that come in that are military background, they're great. And there's going to be a increased need for security guards if you're interested in that. This is there's an increased need for financial services representatives as well. Uh, but, you know, if you're really interested in helping people and want to help you and your family. And I really encourage uh, younger people that this is something that they might want to do. My kids join me, has, have joined me in this uh, process. And I'm, I'm happy for that because I'm educating them on something that can help them in the future, but they can also use to help their friends and they're just not lottie-gagging lottie around and saying, oh, yeah, this is just great. And uh, they're just having fun, but they can actually use their skill sets uh, to really help someone else out there. And so that's it for cash flow. And so um, I hope that, um, you enjoyed that session and we talked about uh, money and flow, cash flow and how you can get additional cash flow coming in to your household. It's, this is great. We have um, three more sessions after this and uh, they're not as, the next one is a little bit longer, but these sessions are great and they're here to help you. And I hope that they really do help you to see what it is that you need to do in order to take control of your finances. All right.